So let's talk about endovascular treatment, right? Because VAN allows us to realize these patients likely have a clot so we can a activate the team faster. So we can see if someone goes to an endovascular center and is offered endovascular treatment, their possibility of a good outcome goes from the one in blue is TPA only, the one in green is TPA plus endovascular treatment. It goes anywhere from 19 to 40% good outcomes all the way from 33 to 71 you can see that it nearly doubles the number of people that are functional if they are given the opportunity to go and have their clot pulled out through endovascular means. So after these five trials came out, the new standard of care, according to the American Stroke Association, is patients who are eligible for endovascular stroke treatment within 10 hours, sorry, within six hours, should be offered this. This is the same thing, just showing the p-value, the 95% confidence intervals, TPA alone versus endovascular plus TPA. Um, I put the slide in to allow you to look up the actual articles and to read them in detail yourself. They're all in the New England Journal of Medicine, all five articles. This was a meta-analysis, but it did not include a couple of these newer articles. So what do these trials tell us? Well, it tells us multiple things. One, we shouldn't be taking people to the endovascular suite unless we somehow know for sure that they have a clot. Because in the interventional management of stroke trial, IMS3, 18% of people didn't even have a clot. And if you're looking for an 18 to 20% difference and those patients that you're looking for a difference for don't even have a clot, you're not going to show a difference. So everyone got a CT angiogram to confirm that there is a clot. Number two is the average time treatment is around four to four and a half hours. What does this mean? It means they moved in a parallel decision-making process to giving TPA as opposed to a series, meaning they didn't go, okay, CT, go back, start TPA, see how the patient does, go back for CTA, then activate the interventional team, then go back. You know, if you're going to do that, for most patients, they're not going to get treatment within four to four and a half hours or even within the six hour time window. And so this really forces us as a community to think about parallel processes as opposed to a series. So three studies went to six hours, one went to eight and one went to 12. This basically means everyone within six hours who, who meets eligibility criteria should be offered endovascular treatment. How about advanced perfusion imaging? Well, only one and a half out of the five studies used advanced perfusion imaging. Most of the other studies just use the CTA or what's called a, a multi-phase CTA to look at collaterals. And some of the trials even re reduced mortality. So these are the basic things when you read all the five endovascular stroke trials that we come away with. And I actually put this together even before the American Stroke Association guidelines came out. And it's very similar to what they had recommended as well. So I like to give you the big picture in, in, uh, or the lecture in one picture. So this is... Um, basically showing the number of people you need to treat to have one person that's independent from TPA from 0 to 3 hours, 3 to 4.5 hours. Okay, Here you can see it's 6 to 7 here and 13 to 14 here. Now we look at the endovascular stroke trials. Remember, this is endovascular with the TPA versus TPA alone. And even when you get TPA, you're still improving this much. So number needs to treat 3, 4, 4. Uh, close to six and seven, you know, which is very good in comparison to what we spend billions on, which is uh, going to the cath lab for ST elevation MIs. You need to treat 17 patients to make a difference. And then the difference is not just in pr preserving brain. No, it's if you combine brain plus stroke plus death, you still have to treat 17 patients to make a difference in one person's life. And this, again, I just like to be transparent. This is based off of the American Heart Association um, guidelines, which use this um, 
meta-analysis of 23 randomized trials and the absolute difference is 6%. Number needed to treat one over the absolute uh, risk reduction, which gives you the 16.7 number needed to treat for percutaneous MI. And this is how, and that's why the number needed to treat is so low here, because if you go back, look at this. We're talking about a 31% difference. That's massive in comparison to 6%, you know. And look at here, from 53 to 29%, we're talking about a 24, 25% difference. And same here, 24% um, difference. So this is something that makes a massive difference in someone's life. So now we have to discuss the paradigm shift. So this is what we need to do. We need to realize that stroke, if it's an LVO or large vessel occlusion, there's a big clot in a big artery. These patients should get TPA and go to the neuro IR suite right away. Just like an ST elevation MI goes to the cath lab. Okay? You know, non ST elevation MIs go for medical treatment, and non large vessel occlusions go to just TPA. So, how can we tell if there's a large vessel occlusion? Well, you can get a CT angiogram, but do you delay getting a CT angiogram? and going to the endovascular suite by getting a CT, giving TPA, waiting an hour, going back for CTA. No, I think there has to be a way to identify these patients early, which is what VAN does. Identifies these patients early so you can get a CT, CT angiogram right away, activate the neuro IR team, give TPA as you're going up to the endovascular suite. So this is the old model, which is seen throughout the country and throughout the world. You get a CT of head, they come in at 20 minutes, TPA decision within 45 minutes, maybe a half hour. Uh, you, you start the IV TPA, they go back to CTA 60 minutes, they wait for, the, for it to be processed in the read. So you, they call neuro IR around 60 to 90 minutes. And best case scenario, you're in, you're in there within 120 minutes. The new model is you do the VAN exam right as they come in. If they're VAN positive, you do CTCTA of head at 20 minutes and page neuro IR or transfer center right at the same time. You still give TPA at a half hour to 45 minutes, so that, doesn't, that shouldn't be slowed down at all. Um, uh, the only thing that might take time is perfusion imaging, but we're only advoca adver um, advocating for CT angiogram. If it takes less than 10 minutes, then we just give the TPA and we um, put in the 20 gauge later. And then your goal is to be to the neuro IR suite or the transfer process within 60 minutes. This is just going over things that we in our community need uh, to become a comprehensive stroke center. It just tells you that doing stroke is not just about pulling out clots. It's about having biplane wounds. It's about having a neuro ICU with dedicated neurointensivists. It's about having neurosurgery uh, backup. It's about uh, keeping outcomes and data collection. Guess what? You want to do it? Show me your outcomes, right? Um, in addition to that, uh, you should offer things like research as well. So we're advocating for these things to be done in comprehensive stroke centers in order to offer patients the best outcome. Because we know patients have better outcomes with neuro ICUs. We know you need neurosurgical backup in, in case any complications happen. We know you need neurointervention 24-7. We need consistent care. Uh, 